Hello, my name is Joe Rodriguez, and I'm going to be speaking about St. Joseph. Before we get into it, though, I'd like to start with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Joseph, you are the faithful protector and intercessor of all who love and venerate you. We have special confidence in you. You are powerful with God and will never abandon your faithful servants. Therefore, we humbly invoke you and commend ourselves with all who are dear to us to your intercession. By the love that you have for Jesus and Mary, do not abandon us during life and assist us at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, so I'll start with a bit of information as to who I am. Uh, first of all, I'm not a seer, I'm not a theologian, I'm not a, a doctor, anything like that. So I'll put that out there right now. I'm just a layman. Um, I was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, whose archdiocese is under the patronage of St. Joseph. Uh, growing up, I wasn't really raised in a Catholic household. We, I was baptized, but we weren't really practicing Catholics. But when I was little, I would go spend time with my grandparents out in the country, and they would go to church every Sunday. And during most Sunday Masses, I'd be looking around at the statues and the art and taking it all in. And there was one statue I noticed of a man holding a baby. And it wasn't St. Anthony, it was St. Joseph. Uh, I noticed, however, that out of all the statues in the church, his was the least adorned. He had nothing fancy around his statue, whereas everyone else did. And so I kind of wondered, I, I felt that he was kind of left out. So I thought I felt bad for him, even though it was just a statue. The symbolism, though, I felt like people were forgetting about him. Uh, I also would look through a children's Bible, a big children's Bible, full of beautiful images. And I used to stare at this for hours at my grandparents' place, because I loved art at a young age. And one image in particular struck me. It was the Epiphany. Uh, here we have Our Lady, very beautiful. We have Our Radiant Lord, the three kings bringing their gifts. Um, and I didn't really see St. Joseph in the picture. I had to flatten the book to see him because the image spanned two pages. So if I flattened the book, I could see St. Joseph. So again, I felt that he was being left out of the picture. I felt bad for him. Um, another example, Renaissance art. Lots of Renaissance art features St. Joseph in the background of images, um, hunched over in the shadows. Sometimes he doesn't even have a halo. Uh, so I, be I began to see him as an underdog and I could identify with him because growing up, uh, I was always left out. Uh, no one really paid attention to me. Um, I was unadorned, whereas everyone else was. Everyone else got the love and affection that I so, so craved. So I began to look to St. Joseph as a type of father figure, um, not just because he was, he was left out and I felt bad for him, but that's what drew me to him in the first place. So I, I identified with that. But I began to see him as my own father uh, I, when I realized all that he did in his life in the service of Jesus, our Lord. Uh, it was amazing. And I thought, why aren't people paying attention to this guy? He was the first man to hold our Lord Jesus in his hands. He was the first to hold the Eucharist in his hands, right? The first man. And I thought he, he wasn't getting due reverence for that. Um, I would go to St. Joseph in times of trouble, in times of joy. I would say my prayers to him or even just talk to him. And I knew I wouldn't get an answer audibly. Like I said, I'm not a seer. But I felt closer to him than I did to my own father on earth. So to me, he's very important. I adopted him as my father. Uh, I was recently at a Marian Eucharistic conference and people would come to my table and ask me where the devotion came from. So I would tell them my story of how, you know, I always looked to him as a father figure because I, I lacked my own positive father figure, my own male role model. Uh, St. Joseph raised our Lord from a child into adolescence and then guided him from adolescence into manhood. And that's what I so sorely lacked in my childhood and my adolescence. I didn't have that guidance. And a lot of people told me the same story. A lot of men uh, grew up distant from their fathers or had bad examples from their fathers. And they ended up turning to St. Joseph. And that's where their closeness came. Uh, what surprised me, though, is uh, a lot of females told me the same story. They would come and tell me. And I never really thought of St. Joseph as being a saint for women. I always thought, you know, it was just for the boys kind of thing, like all, you know, sons under St. Joseph. But I, a lot of females would tell me the same stories. 
Some women suffered abuse. Um, their fathers would leave their families uh, or their boyfriends, you know, would leave them pregnant. Uh, all sorts of things. They never had positive male role models. So when the time came, they would turn to St. Joseph. They found in him the positive male role model, you know, the ultimate father, the ultimate servant of God, the ultimate husband. He embodied all these wonderful qualities that a man is supposed to be. Because St. Joseph is truly 100% man. He is not God. He is man. And therefore, we have a perfect human example. Of course, our Lord Jesus was human as well. Uh, God made flesh. But on a more uh, basic level, we have St. Joseph. So it was comforting to know that other people found a refuge in him as well, because all this time I thought people forgot about him, you know. But I found a lot of younger people were being drawn into him. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, as a result of wanting to make St. Joseph better known and loved in the world, um, because I was surprised at how many Catholics knew nothing about him, uh, a lot of the common argument was, well, he doesn't say anything in the Bible. He doesn't do anything. And I said, well, it's true, he doesn't speak any words, but his actions speak louder than words, right? This was a man who, who raised God the Son into manhood. Like, to me, that's exceptional. I don't know how people could overlook something like that. You know, which one of us would be worthy to do that, you know? But I wanted to make him more accessible because people didn't know him. So I went to my parish priest, who's a good friend of mine, and I, I said, I said, Father Paul, I said, you got to write a book. you got to talk about St. Joseph in your homilies. you got to make him better known. And I used to hound him and nag him, and I kind of feel bad about it now. But I used to really give him a hard time. I said, he's the patron of the church. He's the patron of Canada, the patron of the archdiocese, for crying out loud. Why don't people know who he is? And so one day, he, Father Paul is his name. One day, Father Paul said, you know what? Why don't you do it? You're talking all the time about this. You write the book. You tell people about him. Why can't you do that? So... Having it flipped on me, I, I took the challenge. I accepted the challenge. And so I began writing, you know, amateur books about St. Joseph's life. I thought, what better way than to present his life story to begin with? So in order to do this, I had to go to all sorts of sources. I had to go to books that were printed in the 17th and 18th century about St. Joseph. Uh, a lot of these books are fine print and this thick. Uh, no wonder a lot of people don't read them these days, especially since we want everything now, now, now. We want instant. So I decided to take from all these various sources information about St. Joseph and piece together his life, which is why I called my new book The Book of Joseph. That, that's self-explanatory, The Book of Joseph. So I take from Venerable Maria Dagrida, from Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, from Servant of God, Mother Cecilia Baj, uh, St. Francis de Sales, St. Bernardino of Siena. Uh, I quote the popes as well, Pope Leo XIII, Pope Benedict XV, Benedict XVI, John Paul II, you know, Pius XII. I wanted to get a well-rounded uh, life story of, of St. Joseph from all these various sources. The church is such a treasury we have so many saints at our disposal, so many saints, mystics, popes, teaching that goes back 2,000 years, the church fathers. We have this rich heritage, and St. Joseph is there. We just have to look for him. So uh, in addition to getting to know about St. Joseph by reading my book, people will also get to know who the saints are, in a way, in an indirect kind of way. So in my book, I have elements from his childhood, uh, his betrothal, his you know, the, the birth of Jesus, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to his death and possible assumption into heaven, as well as his patronage over the years. So I wanted a bit of everything in this book for people to, to get started anyway. It's a, it's a foundation to start a devotion to St. Joseph. If you want to read more books after, you're more than welcome. Um, so in 2011, I, I started an apostolate and, you know, I self-printed, self-published all my books. I would send them all around the world. 